Picks, picks. That's right, that's right. What's happening? Hello. Hello, Mr. New York Rick. Uh, how are you? I'm okay. I just want to let you know, um, I was going to start this with a different tone. Um, but because I don't appreciate you knowing why I wasn't here and leaning into that, I'm just going to start by letting you know that I had money on the Kansas City Chiefs. Wow. On that uh, tonight. So that's how we'll start this on this one. I don't believe you for one second. Listen, I can I can show you the like we, we can have Connor take a look at my uh, DraftKings, but anyway, um, that's how that's how we're gonna start. So how are you? I'm okay. Uh, I just got a weird text message. What do we I, got? I mean, I don't want to say it just yet. Hmm. It's the weekend of weird text messages. What what realm of weird are we talking about? I feel like this is um, this needs to be explored. No, no, no. Uh, okay, maybe not. Oh, God. Um, well, I mean, we were just talking about weird text messages. So, so that kind of weird. Uh, yeah. Okay. Interesting. Um, How are you? Yeah, where do, we go from, where do we go from here? Um, I'm good. Uh, I'm doing good. Um, and I'm happy to be here uh, after not being here last week. Um, what a Everything show. Everything okay? Yeah, yeah. Everything is okay. Um, Everything is wonderful now. As, down, down, as Francis down, down. Who said, "I don't care about that, bro. I'm happy." That, that's that's my vibe. That was a great. Uh, that was a, right here. I right mean, now. would you say, you know, that was one of the more important, impactful? I don't know. We've done we've done well, a lot. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's hard to <laughs> it's hard to go back through a decade plus of time and and um, compare it to every single thing that's happened. But I would say, it will be. It ha it is significant now. It is very significant now um, because uh, nobody has spoken like that or, or spoken as freely as that in, in that position before. Um, it has the potential, depending on the outcome of this, to to be infinitely more significant and and one of the most significant things that's happened in the sport mm -hmm. potentially. Um, if Francis Ngannou, uh, if Francis Ngannou leverages all the uh, power that he has right now. And make something uh, monumental happen. This this will be uh, a significant milestone, a significant marker along that journey. So, um, yeah, very very significant, very important, um, and speaks to some of my picks this week. Oh, what do we got? Great! Well, what a segue. Jeez. I mean, is there any other place? And it feels a little bit redundant to start with Francis Ngannou. Is is you know Francis Ngannou be my first pick for this week? All the things you've already discussed, so I'm not going to rehash every single thing, but gambling on himself and winning. Oh, yeah. Continuing to be out in front. Frankly, I will admit, when I started hearing the rumblings of the knee injury, um, my assessment of that was the same as his assessment, which is, it's this is stupid. Um, but yet, he persevered through that and got the job done. Um I was personally very confident in Francis's chances against Cyril. I, I, I was backing Francis uh, when this matchup was announced. I've, I've always thought that, technic breakdown wise, I thought that Cyril didn't have the tools to keep Francis away from him, and and that power would eventually just land. Um, with the injured knee, I was a lot less confident in that. Like GC mentioned, when I was started hearing that, um, I, I I started leaning towards Cyril. I started thinking that that the mobility was going to be a problem, but Francis showed a new wrinkle to his game. So, a lot of credit f on all fronts. Uh, his he tenated the French media. Um, and uh, showed off the the. Oh, I want to get this right. Actually, I don't know who said it. Whoever coined it, but I want to do shout out who whoever coined Nganu Madoff. Um, what what a nickname! Oh my um, god, yeah, those um the pictures, the memes, uh, yeah, 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 of, of Nganu Madoff. Um, I I, I wasn't able to kind of like track down the the originator because so many people were using it. But uh, just shout out to to Francis Nganu. Uh, you you did 15 minutes of it. Uh, at the top and, and laid it out a lot better than I was going to. Uh, so Francis I mean, Ngannou. You have to. You have to be You have to be re redundant. And I would say probably the best thing he accomplished this week, the greatest honor, was landing first on Rick's picks. <laughs> you know? And, and and it wasn't a small bet on the Chiefs either. It, it, was, uh, it was a nice one. Is that nice true? One. Yeah. Oh, you, yeah. I mean, that's that's a no-brainer. What a what an asshole! Really? <laughs> oh yeah. You and GC? Anyone? I mean, I could. 
that's I guess that shows the difference between me and and other people. I would never do that to my friends. Oh, if I stop. knew if I knew that this guaranteed was something that money. What guaranteed money? That was not guaranteed money. You were 13 seconds away from <laughs> the losing line was, that bet. The line is, was minus one and a half, and they and they won by a touchdown. I mean, that's it's not guaranteed money. They got screwed. First of all, if you're not winning games on freaking coin tosses, then uh, you know this yeah, whole let, thing is different. I, you know what? I, I didn't necessarily have a problem with the NFL's um, overtime rules coming into this, but after all the outcry and after kind of seeing how this specific game ended, I'm I, I'm being swayed. Um, that is that is a terrible stupidest way. Stupidest thing. Yeah, when when you're playing as good as as the Bills played to not get a chance at it, that's that's bad. So um, either I've come do around. it, I've come you know, around. back forth, back forth, or um, I think you should just do honestly, like do the like period, a period, like they used to. Yeah, do, do a ten yeah. minute overtime. Like you now, know, do you, is there is there a what's it called? Um, the if if a team scores, is it over, or you want to just do a period, no matter who's ahead at the end of it? Because the, the old NFL rules used to be there was a period, yeah. but if somebody scored in that period, then that was over. I kind of like I the idea of just like a, a fifth quarter. So you're saying just give it like give the it NBA, quarter. like NBA. It's a five. Right? It's a five Isn't minute that? overtime. No, in in hockey, it's, uh, it's sudden death. Yeah, sudden death. Yeah. Um, Baseball, obviously. You know, I could buy that. I could buy that. Freaking, let's play. Let's go. Yeah. Or at the, at the very least, you have to give the other team a chance to respond. At the very least, right. The, the the college football yeah. uh, version. Yeah. But do they still do that thing, GC, where it's like you start at the 35 or some nonsense like that? They do that? Start at the 25. Start at the 25? So it just goes 25, 25, 25? Yeah, whoever doesn't score like doesn't match the score. Like if you score a touchdown and a field goal, then the team that scored the touchdown wins. Okay. That would be pretty That's stupid. That's fun. Right. It would be pretty stupid if someone scored a touchdown they respond with a field goal, right? <laughs> well, why why would you do yeah, that? Exactly. Yeah, you're giving up. <laughs> we're gonna kick, we're gonna be uh, we're gonna be uh, conservative here and uh, kick the field goal. Um, anyway, we're anyway, we're, yeah, yeah, yeah. we're getting away from it. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, but yeah. keep Francis. needling me, and I will keep reminding you. Uh, Francis and Ganu. Um, it was his week. It was his fight. It was his weekend, and now um, he has all the the power. He has all the leverage. It's it's really in his hands. So um, good for him. Congratulations. Mm-hmm. Uh, a gamble that again, I think. I thought was stupid. He thought was stupid, um, but he still persevered and, and went through with it. Um, I, I, I'm, st- I'm still kind of shocked. I'm still kind of. I am. Us. Yes, I'm in awe of that. I mean uh, everything. But he, he did it. Um, on the heels of he, he did this on the heels of on that night. Uh, Davis and Figueroa and Brandon Moreno. Yeah. Can't can't say enough. Honestly, um, I feel bad. Like I haven't given them a it, lot of attention today, but geez, Louise. You know, the story the story is Francis, but right. not only what a fight between the two of them, because it was, but what a three fights. Like this three fight series, not a lot of trilogies can say that in all three fights, you were on the edge of your seat and and they delivered. Every single one of these three fights so far has delivered. With all due respect to the other flyweights. I would watch this fight get run back for a fourth time, a fifth time, a sixth time, a seventh time. Um, I know that the queue has to move, but it's hard for me to to want to see anything other than Davis and Figueredo uh, and Brandon Moreno at this point. Uh, what a trilogy. I'm down for more. Um, now, do you want to see it right away? Because I saw some people, some people say, like, run it back. Sure, run it back. No problem. Is that fair? Do we care? I care, yeah. I don't. I care about Personally, fair. I don't care about fairness. If I thought that fairness was universally applied across the sport, if I thought that it mattered to UFC matchmaking, it mattered to UFC's uh, bottom line and product, that there was a meritocracy and they were holding up somebody, then I would care. Uh, but I'm not convinced of that. I don't feel like um, fairness is is part of the equation at this point. So um, selfishly, give me number four, give me number five, give me, give me number six. Uh, do it. Do it forever. I'll take I'll take this fight forever. I, um, I mean, I look if if Kaikar France beats Askar Askarov, and by the way, if Askar Askarov beats Kaikar France, I think they deserve it. Alexandre Pantoja. You're, these are two separate things. If you're asking me, does somebody else deserve a shot at the flyweight title? The answer is yes. Yes. Of if course. you're asking me, I'm not going to revolt. Fork, would I forego that uh, to see this fight again? Absolutely. The answer is yes as well. Imagine in Mexico. Imagine He's in Brazil. Man. Imagine in Mexico. No, but I know. But Figgy was like, "I'll go to Mexico." Okay, so w- one thing on that, he he walked that back in the post fight press conference. Oh, did he? 
Yeah. Um, what? Why? He was asked about it by by our very own Jose Youngs. Okay. And he basically said, and and I'm not sure what he was getting at here. It, it bears clarification. But what he said was basically, if I go to Mexico with Henry Cejudo, I might never leave. And I'm not sure if that was like, like they're the just going to settle down there. They're going to oh. party too hard. I'm not sure what the 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 the... We would need clarity on that. I'm not sure what the intent was there, uh, but he did walk it back and say, maybe let's do it in Brazil. He reconsidered. Um, so oh, it wasn't, uh, okay. I was like, damn. Wait, someone probably should have told me that. Uh, you know, my fault. I, I wasn't watching uh, all the post-fight stuff, but... Um, he he had second thoughts about it. All right. Um, someone probably told him, yo, man, what are you talking about? Go to Mexico. <laughs> Listen, that's kind of a badass. I mean... Oh, I I, when I heard you, that, I was like, that's the greatest thing yeah, ever. I was saying this to you over text uh, earlier in the week. Figueredo swag, and um, I'm not a fan of the 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 stuff he's kind of doing now. I'm not a fan of the cringe uh, aspect of him. Figueredo has swag, man. I think they could just let that cook and just let him be, you know, Figgy Smalls and just and not necessarily lean into the same kind of playbook that Henry Cejudo and uh, and the others um, with Captain Eric have used. Um, and I And I'm all in on that. I just think he drips it, like just his personality. They've got a little faction demeanor. going on, for sure. And look, it, it's hard to argue with the results, right? Like you can think what you what you want about um, about that. You can think what you want about the 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 tactics being used uh, as far as the media goes, but the tactics being used in the cage and the the results they speak for themselves, man. Like th those are that is a successful team. Those are some successful fighters right there, and Figueroa recapturing the belt um, deserves a ton of. Uh, praise here. I sent Captain Eric a congratulatory text. I'm going to guess that one was unanswered. A WhatsApp. Mm -hmm. um, it turned blue. Meaning it was seen. Yep. But no reply. Mm. I'm not shocked by that. Uh, but yes, he, des he deserved that that message from you. He deserves uh, a lot of praise and a lot of credit for, for that. Um, Light kicks. Baby. As does Henry Cejudo. Um, you know, that new, that, that change of, t or, or addition of teams. Um, for Figueredo paid dividends and he looked really, really good. Um, I know, I know Moreno, uh, was, was good in that fight as well and, and was, uh, pretty close, um, on the scorecards. I thought 49, 46 might've been pushing it, but again, I'd have to rewatch. Uh, I thought it was clearly Figueredo's fight. And, and I think Moreno at this point has, has addressed that as well. I think early he thought he won, but I think he's since been on Instagram saying that he, he knows he lost that fight. Oh, uh, respect. Yeah. Great, great fight. What a pop, Absolutely. huh? Dude. Moreno's a star, no? Crazy. Moreno is like... That pop actually surprised... I mean, like, I knew they loved him. The Arizona thing was cool. Yeah. Nate Diaz giving him the rub was great for him. <clears throat> that was a legit... I mean... Well... Like, that was like a legit superstar pop. Does does that not counter what... <clears throat> like, the 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 other strategy? Like, is that is that the, not the direct response to kind of what we're talking about? Or I'm talking about. I shouldn't loop you in here if you disagree. But what I'm talking about with Figueredo, like, you can be who you are if if you have that, if you have what Moreno has, if you're authentically yeah. you and you can just express that and play with Funko Pop dolls and Legos and laugh about the the, the try hardness in MMA, um, people will respond to that. And Moreno has it in, in spades. He is um, one of one. He is extremely genuine and uh, people respond to it. Just he does not have to pretend to be something he's not. He also, to his credit, he continues to talk about, look, I've got losses. I've lost before. I will be back. And and um, his mentality that and he, he alluded to in an interview with Mike Heck earlier uh, this week or last week, um, taking cues from Michael Jordan. His mentality is mm. is very strong. Great. Meme. Mentality did you guys make that one. Strong. I took that personally. Yes, or was, we, we did wow, make that. Meme. That was good work. Um, but uh, dude, rock solid up up top. Brandon Moreno. It, 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 is, uh, it is a bummer, though. Like, this is a thing that I often get asked about when I go on other shows. Like, oh, man, the UFC has a hard time, like, making stars because you'll get someone who's red hot, and then they'll win a belt, and then they'll lose, right? We that, remember. Yeah, that that's the sport. That's, that's what sport. makes this sport so exciting. And I actually don't think it, like, MMA fans don't care. Like, no one thinks less of Brandon Moreno because no. he lost that fight on Saturday. Now, for the outside guy who's just tuning in once a year, he might be like, oh, this was the dude you told me about? Like, Yeah, well, when you hear about Ronda Rousey's Right, murking everybody in f yeah. fifteen seconds. That's what gets the the general fans interested. But no, nobody. If if you're looking at Brandon Moreno after that fight and saying like he is lesser, you didn't watch the fight. That that's no. just plain and simple. Um, and yeah, and, and by the way, those guys. What about the symbolism that like two years ago they were trying to end that division, and those guys got as big of a pop. Like certainly Moreno got the as big, if not night. bigger. Yeah, than anyone, even even yeah. Francis and Cyril. 
Um, I mean, there's just, it's it's amazing. I'm happy. I'm happy they didn't get rid of it because now there's got, you know, we talk about Mohayev coming up, Kaikar France, yeah. the Saskarov fight. Um, there, it, it's a very viable division with viable contenders and a viable champ. And Figgy's come into his own. I the one part that bothered me about that whole fight, how do you how how does Figueredo win that fight and you don't give the mic to Valid? I mean, <laughs> come on. He was there. He's there. You see him chomping at the bit. It was a very boxing post fight scene <laughs> with all of them. They were all like wanted the camera time. Did you see that? Henry's in there, Captain Erickson, they all of them wanted the camera time. Nobody nobody better than Valid yeah, needed the mic the time. Um I I am forced. I'm fo- you have forced me to tell oh. you champing at the bit. Okay, no, but I think it's actually pronounced. You told me it's spelled, but isn't it pronounced chomping? No. It's champing at the champing bit? Champing at the bit is the phrase. Um, listen, just put that one in the pocket. You know, I know, I, I know you corrected me, but I thought it was actually pronounced that way. Sort of like champ, nip it in the bud. The, right, and people say nipping in the butt, yeah. right? Um, no. Can I break some news here? Hit us. Frank? Let's do it. I love this music. Breaking news. Um, this is big. And I feel comfortable in breaking it right now after verifying it personally. Okay. First of all, shout out to the great EK on oh, yes. Twitter. Edwards Kim. Edwards Kim, legend, living legend. Uh, he actually got the scoop first. Oh my Lord. Served up the alley-oop. I dunked it home. He actually really did the serving up and the dunking, but then I went back and <laughs> double dunked it. Um, one of the great mysteries of the last decade One of the great mysteries on this program is where have you gone pre-Beck? And when I thought of Valid, pre-Beck, it all comes together. Of course, a couple weeks ago, we had the great Al Foran on the show, and that brought back some memories, some conversations about pre-Beck. And I even said to you that I worried that pre-Beck, like, that's, I, I, I worried like the worst, right? Yes, that he's never be seen again, that we don't know what happened. I was in pretty good contact with the guy and then yeah. he just disappeared on me. He actually lived near me, all this stuff. Prebeck is not only alive, I can confirm. He is well. He is alive doing well. well. I actually spoke to Prebeck and and it actually it was because of Al's appearance. That's what ignited it. Yeah. I guess EK went in there and and he did some research and he found him and I spoke to him via, you know, text and uh it warmed my heart. I didn't ask him for anything, not to come on the show this and that, but I just told him like Yo, I get asked about you all the time. You're one of the great characters in the history of this show. And I'm just genuinely happy that you are alive and well. And uh, we miss you, bud. And that's it. And he explained why, you know, yeah. I'll leave that all, uh, you, know, to, to, you know, to our conversation. But I thought that that was really big news that a lot of OG fans, a lot of OG fans will remember P- Prebeck. The new fans won't. Um, I even saw someone speaking of like the Kenny Florian thing. Someone tweeted, I saw here, um, that's like, you know, I, I said one of the most important interviews in the history of the MAR, and then someone wrote back like, LOL, isn't that show only a year old? And I'm like, come on, mm, I mean, 2009, yeah, where have you been? I mean, it's like, go to Kenny's Twitter. Twitter. These guys, they're, they're like arguing with Kenny Florian yeah. about Francis's jujitsu. Like, you realize who you're talking to. I love, I love, I live for and I don't have a, a, a current or recent example off the top of my head, but this I've seen this permutation of, of this exchange happen where somebody is arguing with somebody who literally has like a PhD or like oh, expertise in something. And they're like, nah, you, you know, you should do some more research on this. And then they can hit them with like, yeah, I did oh, my eight years of study on it. Um, and, and this is my field of expertise. Um, this is akin to that. This is, this is, you know, teaching MMA to Kenny Florian or teaching jujitsu to Kenny Florian, uh, when, you know, when you're a, a two stripe white belt, um, just, just a bat, you're going to have a bad go. One more uh, example. Last week I, uh, retweet Sayat, the great manager out in Tiger yes. Muay Thai. He's like, um, Rafael, Rafael Faziv is there. Hamza Chamayev is there. And then someone <laughs> replies like, no, <laughs> he replies Faziv is at, uh, Sanford. So I hit up Danny Rubenstein, who's also the co-manager of, uh, Faziv. And I'm like, where is Rafael Faziv at the moment? He's like, he's in Thailand, Tiger Muay Thai. I was like, this guy's wrong, right? Yeah, he's wrong. Just so, like everyone is an expert. Yeah. Everyone knows this dude. He's telling his own manager. He's telling his own yeah. manager who's literally in Thailand with him. Yeah. No, Have he's actually in photos? Florida. Yeah. <laughs> We've seen the photos since. Now he's, he's literally on fo- in photos in Thailand. Oh, um, incredible. Yeah, I love those. I, I live for those. Those make me so happy to see. Um, okay. We're, we're going to... 
finish up Rick, Rick's yep. picks here. Okay. Uh, revenue sharing. 50% of the UFC's NFT launch going to the fighters. I, I have to admit, I think they announced this in, in November, I believe. They did. Um, I had no idea, didn't know um, that this was happening. Um, and was happy to see that. Um, it, it, you know, I'm not, I'm not predicting that it's a so sign. So explain to me this. But. So actually, uh, if I could break the fourth wall, you did slack me to ask Francis about his necklace. Was that a joke yes. or not a joke? No. You That's really wanted me to ask Francis? We're talking about one of the most iconic interviews and moments in the history well, of the show. You want me to ask him about his NFT necklace? Listen, you cool started necklace. off with some... You, it's not exa- It's not like you started off throwing 100 Every miles an hour <laughs> here. You could have asked him well, about it What is so great about it? It's just cool. I would have liked to know more of the story You like this it. stuff? You saw it on Instagram. W- what does that mean, you like this stuff? Give me, you give like me the NFT it. nonsense? It had like a little screen I'm gonna, built into it. Yo, wow, it's great. I'm so excited about this. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say, listen, Does I it have don't, Pokemon, I, Pokemon cards attached to it too. God, oh, that's a different thing. That's a different thing. That's physical. That's tangible. You can touch magic those. cards. I again, physical, tangible. You can. What touch. were the ones well, that you, you throw on the games. thing? Pogs. Pogs. Um, I am not personally somebody who invests a ton in NFTs. Although, if I do, it's just perspective, right? Like, I I did um partake in and buy some of the UFC NFTs. Uh, but it's perspective. I am not, um, I am not a collector. I am not somebody who is thinking that um, this is guaranteed to make a lot of money down the line. It could, it could not. I'm not. Um, I have the money to spend on that. I am not um, thinking of it as a long term investment. And um, what do you have? Leveraging myself. You, I bought uh, a few of the packs that they came out with. Oh, the UFC, UFC bought. NFTs. Yeah. Who'd you get? I got um, a lot of different people. None of the like rare. Where do you uh, buy it ones. from? There's a there was a website called UFC Strike. They're sold out now. So to come on, really relevant. You can't go. Yeah, there was. Can a, I ask uh, how much it was? Or is that no, no, no. There was a hundred thousand total units uh, packs, and um, they were fifty dollars a piece plus tax. Okay. Or a processing fee. I forget what the extra. And how much? How many was. you get per pack? You get three per pack, um, and you were capped out at five of them. So that that was the the five the packs. Total. Five packs total. And you bought five. I bought five. Um, how how long did it take for it to sell out? A day. It was sold out by the time I was done by end of day yesterday. So it sold out quick in a day. And um, and who'd you get? Anything of note? I got yeah, I got a few cool ones. I got um Robbie Lawler's knockout of Diaz. Uh um Nick, the most recent one. Oh wow. I got the Derek Lewis KO of I forget who it was, one of the Fight Nights Blades. Wait, so is this um, all recent stuff? Yeah, most of it is recent. There's ah, not a ton. That's whack. Um, is it because so so does Robbie Lawler make fifty percent of that? You're saying yes. Yeah, so the fighters get fifty percent of the sales. Yes, the that fighters is, who are featured. The fighters who are featured, and not every fighter is featured. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, they, you know, this is just launch one. There will be additional. Uh, How many fighters featured? This. Uh, I don't know off the top of my head because it wasn't like it wasn't like individual fighters per se. It was moments. It was like plays, like akin to NBA um, Top Shot. They have like this LeBron dunk. It's 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 akin to that, right? So it's it's an individual play. Um, I got Ian Gary, mm. um, his most his. Is it like the actual team. highlight? It's it's the actual highlight. Uh, Casey asked me, does Nick Diaz get fifty percent too? I believe, and don't That's quote a good me on this, but please somebody look into this. I believe that both sides of a fight um, do do get um, some kind of compensation. But but please do not quote me on this. Um, do the research. Look this up. I believe that's the case. I believe I saw that floating around. Um, but much like Casey asking me, like I had no idea about this until this week that that they were going to get 50% um, of, of the uh, proceeds. Uh, so that's awesome. I'm, mm. I, I'm, I am happy to see that. Again, do I think that this is a forebearer of all things to come that all of a sudden the, the tide is going to shift? Uh, no. Do I think people like Francis Ngannou could, could influence that? Certainly. Um, but I'm happy that this is at least happening and that there is a 50% share going to the fighters on this. Um, uh, by the way, according to our good friend, Jedi Goodman, uh, there's another one opening up uh, Monday, next Monday. There you go. So yeah, there will be additional flights of these, obviously. Dapper Labs. Dapper Labs is, is the the company doing it for them. Um, so yeah. That was oh, it cool. dropped yesterday. Yesterday. Mm. It was done uh, within the day. Wow. By 200,000 total packs. Six. I'm, read, I saw. I'm reading the uh, launching first as an open drop of 200,000 total packs. UFC strike will start with the, oh wait, yeah, there you go. We'll start with a first round of 100,000 fully loaded yeah. packs. And then I guess the second one is going to be On the- On Monday uh, must be the, the second 100,000. Right. So yeah. 
um, fifty dollars cool. And then to, you know, to your question, like I again, I'm just doing this to get on the trend. I am not an expert. I am, uh, listen. Kenny Florian is going to talk about uh, crypto NFTs, that type of stuff, um, and and have have knowledge and expertise. That is not that is my not my stake in the game. This it's a it's a it's a cool website. I loved when people were asking Dana about it at the press conference. <laughs> Dana, tell us about the NFTs. You know what? It's like, what? Credit, he punted to uh, let's talk about fights. No, I actually. He, he said, "I appreciate the softball or whatever." No, yeah, that could have been an alley oop for him to 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 go on and on about that partnership. But instead, he uh, said, "Now, is it possible? It's just because he doesn't know about it. It is possible. <laughs> you, you can. I don't know either. Someone would ask me about NFTs. I'd be like, "Yeah, let's talk about the fights." <laughs> <laughs> oh, now what about you? How many NFTs do you have? What's your collection look like? Yeah, it's a, it's a pretty vast collection. Um, at the moment, I have uh, three. Um, I have. Um, I have one Pikachu. I knew you were going to name I, Pokemon. I, I, I knew it. I actually, my, my kids, my I kids don't follow. Um, what's the one that I always, uh, Squirtle, 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 Squirtle. Yeah. Right. I always make fun of my kids. I'm like, um, no, but can we stop here for a second? What? Why are poke? Why? Why is? Why does your mind go to Pokemon right away? Pokemon is physical, right? The cards are like, yeah. Is, it, is that and NFT? Logan Paul got uh, maybe. Did you Pokemon see that video where he no. got scammed? Yeah, I did. Um, now. I bet he made on the YouTube videos and everything else. I'm sure he recouped quite a bit of that money, and he Gee, probably Joe. will be able to get a get a um, a refund of some sort. I'm not listen. I'm I'm not expecting that Logan Paul is going to be hard up after this. Um, I think he'll probably no. work out okay on the equation. Um, great content though, fantastic content, especially uh, when they were were cutting it open. Um, as a former, you know, li lifetime ago, I used to collect all kinds of basketball cards. I've got some actually some oh, really I, good ones I, that I should. I have one of the all-time great basketball card collections. Yeah, same. I mean, this like, has been I've rated. Got, I've I've got a great one that I'm sitting on that are not like graded and and properly graded, kept, graded. and I should probably um, do that. Um, I actually, I believe my buddy Ryan works for PSA, so I should I should try to get that done. I just don't um, get. I like the whole digital thing. Um, by the way, Jedi sent me the list of the, I guess the moments. Oh, I got the, the Chris Barnett moment. That that one I'm happy about. By the way, just think of something intangible that has a lot of value, like a Super Bowl. Wow. Frank. <laughs> Are you nuts? What is wrong with you, well, Frank? <laughs> Your wife is from Buffalo, for God's sakes. It's, you well, should not be alive. Intense. So I grew up in Texas, where yeah, so we had Dallas. <laughs> Yeah. We had the Mavericks, we had the Spurs, we had the Rockets, we had right. the Stars. Right. Maybe the Rangers never won a World Series, but Yeah. Then we have UT. I'll tell you who didn't win a World uh, a Super Bowl, the Houston Oilers. You know what? They belong in Tennessee. Yeah, that's right. Jeez, I can't believe Jeez. that. And people were just starting to like Frank, so when he's yeah. not here next week, it's going to be rough. Why where's he going? <laughs> Oh, it was a joke about you firing him. Oh, okay. Uh, I was happy for a sec. Uh, Surreal Gun, <laughs> Francis, Figueredo, <laughs> Usman, Volkanov. See, what I don't like about this, if I can just nitpick for a second, sure. um, I mean, it's all like, I mean, it's like Danny. It's all like, it's contemporary people. Yeah, well, I think I want freaking and I think GSP they, winning the title. Oh, yeah, I think they did this with Top Shot as well. But again, I'm I'm not an expert on this, so don't quote me. But I believe it's like contemporary. Then you can cut, start opening up. Remember, because of the way the compensation works on this, they have to do a deal with the people. So you have to go to GSP. You have to go to XYZ yeah, person. That's the problem. And you have to make the deal to get the legends. So I would expect that at some point their mind is where your mind is, and the, and they're going to be doing those moments with with legends. Um, but I think this is the easiest way to start. Right? You've got your roster. You talk to them, you cut the deal, and you get it done. Even Francis Ngannou. Um, I, I legit, when office. I saw the message, which by the way, I saw it afterwards. I mean, I was locked in. I didn't, I was looking at my Slack. Uh, you could talk in my ear, no? Or you can you not? No. Frank, can someone talk in my ear and yeah. no one hears it? Yeah, we can do that. I mean, no one seems to take advantage of that, but uh, you could have said, hey, ask him. Um, I definitely wanted to have asked them. Yeah, I mean, you just gave me the, you read like, me the riot act about yeah, yeah, not asking like, them, and now you're like, hey, before you go, as cool, you uh, just it bared cool. your soul for us, talk to me about that NFT necklace. Hey, yeah, Ariel, because you came in and started with, so tell me about, tell, like, you could I think, have, I think you we kind of, I think we went to, from zero you know, to 100 real quick. N there were, listen, if you asked them the first thing that, I think it would have been fine. Oh, what's that around your neck? Huh. Let's get into it. Uh, but no, I will not, I will not besmirch you on, on, the, on that interview. I, I have nothing to, to say. I, the, no missed opportunity there, but it would have been nice. It would have um, been nice. But, uh, yes, that was nailed. Well, well done and, uh, sig very significant in, in, 
in the history of the show and and potentially of the sport. Let's see, let's see where this nets out. But now, are there any, now, now that's in Francis's hands. Are there any Nelk Boys NFTs? I like, believe yes. Okay, I'd like look. Maybe I'll get let's that. be real. Let's be real about what's happening here. There will be NFTs for everything. Mm-hmm. Um, what the value of these things ends up being um, is up to us. Is up to everybody whether they value this and invest in this. Um, I don't think. Look, I don't think it's ridiculous. I just personally don't assign a ton of value to the digital space, right? That will change as I think things become more digital and uh, the metaverse and and other things like that become a reality. Um, will I then shift and all of a sudden want to hang digital art in my digital house? Maybe. Um, at the moment, I'm more concerned about physical houses um, and real property and, and real art and things mm. like that. But that could shift. By the way, I just thought of a tremendous idea. Hit me. MMA Hour NFTs. Yeah, big moments, right? We could I roll mean, them back. Francis here, Connor back in 2013, um, you know, Mayhem, Habib in studio. It's not, it's not Rampage Dancing. What the It's not hell? a terrible idea. Hit us it's up, UFC terrible... Strike. You want to get in on this? Well, Dapper Labs, right? Like, no, I want to do with up. UFC Strike. I want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> UFC Strike is just the name of the, of the thing. I want to do the Labs MMA Hour Moments presented by UFC Strike. <laughs> Again. <laughs> what a bad name. That's eh, fine. It's fine. Um, but actually, I think it's a pretty cool idea. It's not terrible. Listen. It, I mean, of you course, you can go on work, YouTube right? and just clip the thing this yourself. Is. Well, which you, is well, the see, part. This is the, I, I feel like you don't understand. <laughs> it's like, it, it's, it's, it's a representation, right? You don't actually own, you don't actually own that moment, right? Because right. that moment happened in, in real time. It's like stocks, right? It's like mm-hmm. a stock market. You don't own that company, but you are invested in that company and, you, you then um, have stakes and the value it is based on what other people are willing to pay for it, trade it, collect it, how much they value it. Um, so if there's a, 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 a rabid MMA hour audience out there that's willing to drive the value up of those moments, yes, and or bu- purchase those moments or trade those moments or share them. Let us moments, know. Um, then it could be big. Could All be right. really big. Uh, last one. Okay. Sorry. This is, this is, uh-huh. this is a long so this is, one. I mean, got one up for last week. Go ahead. You know, and I'm someone's gonna, getting a phone call right now. Every, it's me. Oh. Every bite, every bite of that dinner. Um, Which dinner? That, the dinner that I'm paying for with the money that I want on the Chiefs. Every oh, bite of that fun. dinner. The best part about be. last week was you walked in. I was like, oh, look who's here today. And you're like, oh, how long are you going to keep this up? The look who's here today. Yeah. And then literally 30 minutes later, you left. <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to go into too much detail. No, I know. But it's like you walked right into it. By the way, yeah, yeah, and I actually did feel bad at some point. Now with this whole Chiefs bit, I don't feel bad about well, it. Well, this is, this is my clap back at you. Mm. So um, last one. Uh, farewell to Alex Savas. Oh, yeah. Who was a part of the MMA. And I meant to do this last week, but obviously didn't oh, yeah, have the man. opportunity. Who was a part of the MMA fighting social team. Um, accepted a new position. Thank you. And uh, wishing for the best uh, on your new journey. Amen. Um, Godspeed. Alex. Happy trails. Um, and that's it for Rick's picks this week. By the way, a lot Long. of people, a lot of people, like, I mean, multiple people on this show, people that we work with, that we know. I mean, there was one point where I just put my phone like this and then I turned it around and I had 50 missed texts because mm-hmm. a lot of people were reaching okay. out and so, being like, hey, man. I actually, I, so, I went from, if I went from the bottom up, it went from, oh my God, congrats, I'm so happy oh, for boy. you. And then it went uh, to, oh my God, holy crap, I feel horrible. Let, Are you okay? <laughs> let's have a real Larry David question here. Wait, wait, but I didn't finish my statement. Oh, okay, go. I, I didn't get anything from you. Not a single like, okay, hey, well, man. This is this is what I want to discuss. Feel right? bad. So you okay? Let's, let's have a curb your enthusiasm uh, uh, discussion. You coming in tomorrow? Yes. Man, that it's going to be so every bite of that dinner. Like, yeah, when I, yeah, yeah. um, okay. I thought I considered. I thought I thought to myself, this this was my thought process here. So obviously I know this is happening because I have money on the Chiefs, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I know this is happening. After I get, I come down from my elation. Yeah, I bet. I, um, bet. I say, okay, clearly Ariel's, you know, this is this is going to be rough for Ariel. Do I text was where I started, right? I mm-hmm. do I text. And mm-hmm. I'm thinking, yeah, like you probably want to say something. Appreciate the text, yeah. Then I thought, okay, let me see if Ariel's posted on Twitter. Because mm. that will tell me, mm. if I look on Twitter... That will tell me how hard Ariel's taking this, right? Mm-hmm. If he's not on Twitter, if he hasn't posted anything, that means that this is this is a real rough one. Mm-hmm. Like this is one to to probably and and from that point, I looked on Twitter. At that time, you hadn't posted. I know you posted something later mm-hmm. that night. I thought to myself, okay, I'm gonna let this one lie. 
he probably has a lot of these texts already. Mm -hmm, that's true. Um, do I want to be another person to add on this? Is it going to make a difference? Um, and ultimately, what I netted out was, no, I will I will let this lie, not mention it. No, it was Why bad. bring it back up? Let, let him stew in it. Wrong call. Now, that's the wrong call. So I should have texted. You should have texted. Saying. I remember everyone who texted, every single person. Actually, if I'm being honest, only one person in that room texted me. Well, I can't speak for what their thought process is. No, listen, was, I'm, just, just I'm just saying, for you. only one person truly cared enough to text me, and that was Joe. Who, well, by the way, our team beat his team last week. Listen, you, Joe, you, you, and the guy to your right were both celebrating your big winnings. Joe, Joe is a true mensch. Yeah, I'm not surprised by that. Um, I'll say Frank was I dancing know, on Buffalo's grave. <laughs> Joe won money on the Tyree kill touchdown, so he was happy about. Oh, oh my God! Look at this guy forgiven. selling out forgiven. Joe. Let me say this: selling out Joe. How dare you? I know everybody in this room to be good people. I yeah, stand, no, no, I stand I agree by that. With that. But I, it, I mean, look, I, I felt on an island. I felt like I was on an island. I was alone. I told, listen, I told you, I told you my thought process. I told you what I was thinking here. Yeah, that's wrong. You were, you were, you were. I remember hurting. everyone who texted. Actually, I, one of the I'll best texts that, I got was Brian into, Stan. Into, How about Brian Stan? I haven't talked to Brian Stan in like three now, years. Let me ask you this. You're saying the right gesture is to text, and I get that. Yeah. And, and I will admit, if if that was the wrong call, which you're saying it was, I will I will accept that. Did those texts make you feel better? Kind of. I mean, it was like, uh, I don't really want to reply to all of these couple of yeah. heart emojis. See, things. that was what I was thinking as well. But, but it was nice. It was nice to be like, is, man, that, is that, the thing that counts, I feel but. for you, bud. Yeah. Even, even Anthony Smith, who was talking smack throughout the game, wearing his Chiefs jersey, even at the end was like, I feel bad. Yeah. No, I get it. I get it. And he's a Chiefs fan. I tried to weigh all those options, but I, I made the wrong I made the wrong choice. Here's the bottom line. Ultimately, when the Cavs don't make the play-in tournament in April. I mean, this is this is pathetic, Ariel. I'm not going to text pathetic. you. <laughs> I mean, the Cavs are like a top seed in the East. This I'm is not going to text you. Whenever that, sad. you know, that time comes, sad. I'm just this not going to text. I was I mean, going to text. I, I would have texted. I, I swear to God. Go into the archives. Did I text you after they beat the Warriors? After, after... Yeah, I, I no, I texted you after after they beat the Warriors and you said no Kevin uh after they beat the Nets and you No, said no, 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 no. I'm talking 2016. I don't know. Yeah. I hope, you know what? I I didn't at that point I definitely God didn't. himself That's the kind of person me, I am. I wouldn't have even cared. Oh, it must I was, be oh, it must be nice. It is nice. Yeah. I must tell you. you. You know, you've asked a lot of people how it feels. You never asked me, but it feels great. I definitely asked um, you. Let me <laughs> let me let me say something though. Uh I swear, I almost tweeted uh, when when the Cavs uh, last decimated the Knicks, or or was it Julius Randle's terrible performance against Golden State? Maybe I forget. Whatever. No, the Pelicans. The Pelicans. Oh God, what a nothing you could was. say about. I almost tweeted. There was a time earlier this year where Ariel Hawani told me that he would take Julius Randle over That's right. Mobley. I almost tweeted that. Not only that, you're retweeting you. some Fakakta quote from Adam Schefter of Andy Reid. Like not only that, you're like you're like freaking doubling down on it. I saw that. Retweeting you know, the freaking. By the way, who's your source? Okay, Adam, where do you? How do you know that he said this? He sounds said it like in a the bullshit. Press yeah, okay, he could have made that up. Oh, oh, how do you know that he said it to? Yeah, yeah, that's win fair. one for the Gipper. That's very okay, fair. that's very fair. Get out of here. Uh, yeah, great. Okay, line, by the way, thirteen seconds left. The place is going nuts. Hey, be the Reaper. Don't be the Grim. Wait, fuck wait, wait, off. Time fuck time off. Time time off. This is coming from the guy who was so impressed yes. from what Eric Nixick said to Francis. Yeah, because I heard it myself. I heard it with my own eyes. But that proves that it can't be done. That proves it can't be done. By the way, by the way, by the way, that proves it can be done. Eric Nixick didn't say anything profound. He didn't come up with some... I thought it was pretty profound. No, no, no. What he said was, I believe in you. We've been through a lot. Go out that's, there and show... That's profound. Them. He didn't say, hey, when the going gets reaper, yeah, the be line. the grim... Oh, fuck. <laughs> ah, <laughs> when the going gets grim, be Come on. Grim. Come on with that crap. Uh, can we talk about Eric Nixick, though? Just generally. Oh, I just like, love that guy. I just love great that guy. Dude. Yeah. He just seems like the coach you want in your corner. Oh, my God. Um, Solid as a rock. What what a what a moment! What a moment! Truly, literally um, and figuratively, he's a big guy. He is he's a big guy, and uh, as he told us uh, last week, he's been hit in the back by a baseball bat yeah. and was unfazed. Um, so yeah, shout out to Eric Nixick. Um, yeah, I feel like I feel like we've we've covered a lot here. Yeah, we have. All right. Uh, thank, thank you very much. God bless. Hey, I, I should shout out by the way the people who won on Saturday, other than Davis Figueroa and Francis yep. Ngannou, Michelle Pajeda, Saeed Nurmagomedov, Michael Morales, Victor Henry. Great story there. The, uh, the pupil of one Josh Barnett who uh, scratched and clawed his way to the UFC and took the, uh, 
He took the scenic route, no doubt about that. And I tweeted out the video that uh, Esther and Casey did on him, the profile, which I think was like six and a half years ago, five and a half years ago. It's a great story. So uh, shout out to him. Jack Della Maddalena is a big time star who improved to 11 and two, had a big win over Pete Rodriguez with a very impressive first round finish. Tony Gravely, Matt Frivola, Vanessa Demopoulos, and Jasmine Yasudavicius. I believe I nailed that. Um, Canada's own. 